supposed to do the ha well I, I think I did some in there I forgot about that sorry uh, dude I wanted the whole step half step yeah I know what you're talking about and I kind of do it but it's I don't do it exactly because that's not a reliable finger none of them were seven years ago I couldn't feel anything I still can't feel anything in these fingers that's why I was able to play for 14 hours one day. And the grooves in these fingers were so deep that my friend was like, holy crap! I'm like, it doesn't matter because I can't feel. So I can play until they bleed. But they don't bleed. It's, they're friggin' hard as, you know, rocks because I've been playing my whole life. Not great, but I play. <laughs> It's hard to freaking figure it out. I can't play the first part, but if you can guess what that song was, barely, I will give you a doll hair. So there you go. Son of a gun! That chorus, when I use it now, it cuts uh, sustain or something out. It's weird. Huh? Huh? <laughs> This is 
a good sounding guitar and it don't have to be Gibson does it no all it has to be is a good guitar decent wood and a super distortion potted dude I'm telling you I've that I've come to the conclusion that you know it's, it's a hit and miss with Seymour Duncan every time I've had to you know send hiccups back three four times before he gets it right any time I order a friggin uh, Larry DiMarzio super distortion it is a badass sounding pickup I right there that <laughs> too much right there all right that's it for tonight kids boys and girl I don't know how many girls watch this I mean I know one two three couple but not a bit I mean I look at the analytics everybody's in America and then a couple in England and a few other places South America and then mostly male, few chicks, <laughs> few girls, and that's it. I mean, once I get this going, and I I go to where I'm, you know, making money now, all this changes. I'll go, I'll just set up like a a backdrop and lights. I got the lights and everything right here. Everything's ready. Nothing will change. I might get a mic just for me and then a mic solely for that. So we'll have the two. Because I've got the mixer right there. Everything's here. It's just, trouble is, it's here. And I needed to go, I needed to travel with me. Because I don't spend all my time here. But I make all my videos here now, apparently. I haven't made a, you know, out of... California video so this is it if you see this uh, you know I'm in California otherwise I'm in Utah or Nevada so there you go
Attraction X rated Bloodsucker Night Stalker. Those are the four names that that song has had. So the first name was that was Fatal Attraction, that song. Now, I don't know if anybody knows the band Malice. Freaking awesome band that should have made it, but they didn't. Just because bad timing. And the singer trip out, he just went nuts. He was nuts, which was the cool part. And you could see it in his eyes. He was like a madman. And they played off that. And it worked until he actually went nuts. <laughs> uh, what was his name? James Neal. And he had a voice like Rob Halford, but better, if you can believe that. And he could just go from woo to just screaming as high as and not that you know glam scream or the you know glam, yeah I don't call it metal it's Hollywood or 80s or whatever the 80s you know screaming no malice was badass look him up and uh, I used to see I went to see him like I heard him on that stupid uh, record and they had two songs on it and they were playing the Troubadour with that stupid ass crappy band I hate Great White just so you all know and you probably do and before Great White was Dante Fox where that stupid bass player was in the band that was in Ozzy's band for five seconds and then got thrown out because he was taking up too much he's getting too much press Ozzy's supposed to be the only one doing it and maybe the guitar player if they felt like it so, I went down to see uh, Malice, and they're friggin' playing. They're, fr you know, pretty well set up. I mean, you know, two stacks, two Marshall stacks each side. Bass player's got full-on uh, amp pegs, I think. Just blasting at the Troubadour. Then the friggin' uh, middle of the song, the friggin' PA goes out. Boop! Gone. And he keeps singing. And you can hear him over the marshals, over the drums, the marshals, the bass. He's just screaming and as loud as he can. And this guy is just a maniac. I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys friggin' rule. And then they started writing these badass songs, Gods of Thunder and uh, Stellar Masters and uh, another one, Jet something just crazy but really cool Judas Priest kind of but way heavier and way better so anyways I used to go see him a lot and uh, it was time to write songs because I was forming a band and I came up with this and I had started playing it 1984 1985 1986 1987 I've recorded it. It's it was my song. I just told you I had four titles. Then Malice releases <laughs> their second album, which kind of you know tanked. But there's a song on there called Murder, and it's not exact. It's not even to me. It's I can like oh that's where I got the the idea it was in my head i'm like this is like coming to me like it's being fed to me the whole song and i wrote it and i'm like yay i wrote a song i will call it fatal attraction and then x-rated and that stayed x-rated until trick-or-treat when it was bloodsucker and then we redid it in fatal attraction and called it night stalker but the basic it's just the basic way it's set up because theirs is like faster a lot faster and i don't remember how malice's goes but it's a great song and it's called murder and everybody's like that kind of sounds like your song I'm like, really oh and i played it for the drummer the drummer for malice was in fatal attraction for like a month 
we recorded like four demos at his house in uh, Bever in the uh, Hollywood Hills, and uh, then he decided he wasn't going to be the drummer; he was going to be the manager. But this guy was making really good money. He got in the studios, and, and he was a prop maker, so he didn't really need to do it. And I was like, please, you know, play in the band, and if you don't play in the band, manage us. And I wore a Malice shirt on stage, you know, Fatal Attraction a couple times. But he uh, had his thing going, and uh, don't blame him, you know, he's married, trying to start a family. But Cliff Carruthers, great friggin' drummer, really nice guy. So he was in and out of Fatal Attraction, and... Uh, yeah, so it, it, we did demos at his house, and it was him and the guy, the guitar player for uh, on the first Suicidal Tendencies CD. Can't remember his name now. Crazy guy. I don't know if he's dead or what happened to him, but he plays on one of our songs and was in the studio, you know, helping us. In because uh, Cliff had a studio in his house, I'm like, in the basement. It's bad ass. I mean, you go down these this little elevator and opens up, and there's a studio, and it's all electronic. He had electronic. I'll have to put up the friggin' uh, one of the uh, what you call it demos that we did because it's just it's crazy because like. Those are that's pretty eighties sounding because of the drums that had the at the time it sounded cool, but now you hear it and you're like, that's obviously electronic drums and it sounds stupid. But hey, we were playing with the drummer from Alice and I was happy. And the guitarist from Suicidal, what's his name? Mike something no, Mike is a singer. Anyways, the guitar player was doing a project with Cliff, and that's why he was there. And so he played on one of the songs we did. We did like uh, four songs. We did uh, Tonight, of course. And we got to rearrange a little because I was saying, dude, don't you think it's stupid? We have two friggin', you know, souls. He goes, yeah, but I think you should do this. And he got us to do the background vocals. Ah, which I'm like, I ain't doing that. So they figured it out. And we did Tonight. We did... Uh, we were going to do the song I just played, but he's like, that sounds like one of uh, Malice's songs. I'm like, nah, nah, which one? He goes, I can't think of it. I go, see, because you know what you're talking about. He was right, though. A lot of stuff. You know, I got a song called, uh, I don't know, I know what I want, but don't know how to get it. I know what I want. <laughs> song is that I went to see Molly Crew 19 late 81 early 82 they were just switching over to full-on devil stuff 
and they're like, we're going to play, and this is at the Glendale Civic Auditorium, right across the street from Community College in Glendale. And they had a band that was like the uh, village people, seriously. And they were called like Sarge or Navy or something. Lieutenant, I don't know what it was, but it was like five guys dressed up as sailors dancing and singing to disco. I mean, it had to have been a setup because they got booed and p pissed and poop and boogers and pee everything everything was thrown at these guys they did like half the set and they walked off they were like Woo -hoo. you know that motley crew crowd was not into that and i think crew set that up but uh so there you go so they played this song we just wrote a new song it's called knock em dead so they played it and then a couple months go by they I, they don't play it again for a while and that comes out and it doesn't sound exactly like knock em dead but you can see where i got the influence right where the, it's similar everybody does that Every, that's how all songs are written you know there's nobody comes up with anything truly original really especially anybody name it zeppelin look at all this stuff the beatles all the stuff they ripped off. Michael D. Rock Legend. All the stuff here. <laughs> there you go. This is a long... I made a long video for you boys and girl. Comment and uh, subscribe. And there you go. Man, I'll see you next week. Later.